Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Austin from Awful Media, and today we're going to be focusing on the opposite thing that we did last time. Last time what we did was we had a JSON file, and we read data from it. Pretty simple. Today, though, we're going to take C-sharp objects and write them to JSON files. This is a full circle thing, right? So we're going to go from being able to write data from our game to a file system, and then reading data from a file system to our game. And that really opens up a lot of possibilities. So I want to go ahead and get started with this and show you how I would go about it using the lit JSON library. This is a direct follow up to my last video. So if you did not follow it, there's going to be a couple of steps in this video that you're not going to understand. So be sure to follow it, at least get the uh, first few minutes out of the way where we set up the lit JSON library in unity and get that covered. So what I have here is I have a scenes folder that contains a scene and my visual studio plugin. That's it. Nothing else. Because all we have to do is create an object in C sharp and write it to a JSON file. So it's all I need. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create a C sharp script. I'm going to call this write JSON. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio, reload all. I'm not sure why it asked me that already. But what I have to do now is I'm, well, first I want to zoom in because last time you couldn't even see the video, I don't think, but uh, maybe you got something from it anyway. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object that's going to be based on a class. So let's go ahead and create a class real quick. We're going to create a player object that's going to be based on a character class. This character class could contain a bunch of different stats, the name, the ID, location information, I don't know, whatever you wanted to have for your characters in your game. So let me create a public class called character. Now my character class is going to have a few things. The first one's going to be a public integer called ID. The next one's going to be a public string called name. Uh, then let's create a public int called health, a public bool called aggressive. And what I mean by that is, does this character attack the player? And if not, is the player or is this character the player? I don't know, maybe. The next thing will be a public integer. Now let's do a public array events. There we go. Make this stats. So we can have an array that contains integers that represent our character stats. So we have power, we have speed, we have accuracy, things like that, that are just represented in an index, as an index in an array. And this will also be good because then I can show you how it works when you write an array to a JSON object in a file. You can see how it actually, it spits out the correct format for you. It's pretty cool. So that's all my character is going to have. We've done all this before. This is a very simple C sharp thing. You're creating a, uh, a class, you're creating attributes for that class, and then you're going to be creating a constructor to fill out those attributes when you create an instance of this class. This is basic C sharp. If you don't know what I'm doing, you can ask me in the comments below. I'll answer it a couple times, but really you need to uh, go back and learn some basics of C sharp first. So let's create a constructor for this character. I want to call it public character, obviously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this out with my arguments. This is going to contain all of them. So I need an int that's ID, need a string that's name, need an int that's health, need a bool that's aggressiveness, need a, an int that's an array that is stats. And then I'm going to say this.id is equal to ID. Now this is saying this as in this instance ID is equal to the ID that I passed the constructor. Just a quick overview there. This name is equal to name. This uh, health is equal to health. Now I could build this out automatically, but I want to uh, do it so you can see exactly what I'm doing. This dot aggressive is equal to aggressive. And this dot stats is equal to stats. There we go. So our character class is complete. 
Now what I want to do is I want to create an instance of this class. So we're going to do a public, nah, maybe public is fine. Call it a character. That's the type. It is going to be a character. And then I'm going to call it player. And this is equal to a new uh, character. And that should be it. But it's going to give me an error because there is no constructor. Actually, it didn't give me an error. Why didn't it give me an error? There's no constructor without, with zero arguments, capitalized, but I'm not sure. Hmm. But anyway, what I want to do now, it's not giving me any information. I'm honestly not sure what's going on. I may just have broken Visual Studio, <clears throat> but we can try to do it without it. Is equal to new character. Oh, well, there we go. No, still didn't do anything. <laughs> All right, so the first one's going to be an ID. Second one's going to be a name. It's going to be uh, Austin the Wizard. The next one's going to be health. So it's going to be 1337 because obviously. The next one's going to be aggressiveness. I am not aggressive, so I'm going to put false. And the next one's going to be an array of stats. Now, you're going to pass this argument of an array just like you would define an array when you create an array. So what you would do is do a new int just like that. And with your braces, you're going to put in your stats. So like seven, four, eight, 21, 12, 15, five, 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 whatever. It doesn't really matter. All right. So there is our array of stats. And what I mean by it's going to be the same way as defining the array. What I would do is do a public int uh, I don't know, something, call it something. And I would make a new int, and we would do this, and we would add like one, five, six, blah, blah, blah. And that is how you would define your array, just like that. And we're doing the same thing, except we don't have to store it in a variable because we're just passing it to an argument, or as an argument. I wish it would have formatted this for me, but it's fine. So now what I want to do is I want to take this object here and I want to convert it to a JSON string that we can store in a file. So to do that, we need lit JSON. So I want to go to my downloads. You've already got this if you follow the last tutorial. Again, I highly suggest you do that. But if not, go here, grab the DLL. We're going to drop it into our Unity project. Really quick, boom, drop it in there. Go to Visual Studio. Now, if you're using Mono Develop, it's pretty similar, but follow the manual in the description below for uh, setting up a reference. Go to references, go to add reference. I'm gonna go to browse. I'm gonna find the lit JSON within my project assets folder. Grab that, click add, click okay. And we have it. Again, last video covered that. So watch that video. Using lit, I'm not getting any, 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 any intelligence. Let me uh, close this real quick. All right, let's try this again. Do I get anything now? There we go. There's no errors here, so I'm guessing this is all okay. Now what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to create a JSON uh, string from this. And we're going to do it the same way we created the object from the JSON string, but it's going to be a bit backwards, obviously. So I want to create a JSON mapper object, I want to call this, um, that's fine, look at this, I want to call this, let's see, player JSON, pretty creative, and that player JSON is going to be equal to JSON mapper, just like before, but now it's going to be to JSON, before we went to to object, but now we're going to JSON, take the object and create JSON from it, and I want to pass it player. That is the object we're converting to JSON. Just a quick example, if I do debug.log, player JSON, I'm gonna get a quick look at this to see if it's printing out everything we need. String to, oh, my bad. Not a JSON mapper, JSON data. This creates a JSON data object, so it has to be a JSON data type, not a JSON mapper. That was my bad. 
So now I'm going to print this out real quick and see what I'm getting from it. I should get uh, a JSON string that represents our player object. Reference script is missing. I what? Oh my goodness. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm breaking everything. Everything's breaking. All right. Let's try again. <laughs> I actually printed it already. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. So it printed out a JSON string that looks just like you would expect it to look. It is a JSON string, right? But now I want to write this to a file. That's the easiest thing to do. So let's go ahead and do using system.io. As you know, I need this for the uh, for the file system on my on my computer. Again, watch the last video for an explanation of how this works. But this gives access to the file class. Last time we used read all text, right? Yeah, read all text. This time we're using write all text. It does the same thing in a sense, but it's kind of backwards again. What this does, instead of opening a file, reading out the text and closing the file, it creates a file, writes text to it, and then closes the file. If the file already exists at that path, it just opens that file, overwrites it, and closes it. So it covers all the bases for me. It's a, it's a very simple one-liner. Uh, if you want something more, more in depth, you can totally write out your own method of how to handle this. But for now, we're gonna be using this. Again, for the path, do application.datapath. And we're gonna concatenate the name of the JSON file we want it to, to write and the extension. So it might be player.json or something like that. And remember, datapath is the a path to the actual assets of our project depending on the application you're on so if you're in the web browser it's going to be the url to your to your assets if you're in the editor it's going to be url directly to the directory for your assets stuff like that the next thing it wants is the string to write to that file it's pretty straightforward because any player json that's the string but it's going to throw an error here because this is a json data object it does not recognize it as a string so all I have to do is convert it to a string. No problem. There we go. Now what this should do, if everything's correct, is it should uh, throw an error. Oh, I need to, uh, that's not the issue, but I need to do that. Hmm. Access denied. That was the issue? It checks that when it compiles? That's pretty cool, okay. So what I've done is I've played, let's go to my project folder. There's nothing here, so did I break it? Probably, but let's check. You have to call a refresh event in the Unity assets to uh, see any, any changes that have been made. When you create a file in Unity, if I go to create, create C-sharp, uh, C-sharp, when I create that script, what it does is it creates a script and it calls a refresh event. So I have to also refresh to see if I have a new file. And I do, it's called player, it's a JSON file. And it contains JSON data. That's great. That's what we want. It's a little ugly, right? It's all one line. But if you want to send this over the network or if you want to download this quickly, make sure you have it all compressed up like this. And if they want to edit it, they can drop it in the formatter and edit it like that. So like, if I wanted to do that, I could open this up, copy this. I'll go to uh, jsonformatter.curiousconcept.com. I love this validator slash formatter. I'm going to paste it in, click process. It says it's valid, which is good. I was hoping it'd be valid. And it formats it out for me. I could just copy this. And then we have uh, easy to edit, oop, easy to edit JSON data. Just go in here and change stuff, load up the game. Stuff's different, stuff's new, really simple to do. Really a cool way to offer some, uh, some modification to your game. Especially if your, your game is an open moddable game. This is going to be a very helpful technique for you for uh, saving data and loading data. But that is pretty much it. Uh, there's other ways you can handle doing this. You can write out, say you have a tile map data object that contains all your map information. Or if you have uh, ways that you define rooms, ways that you define an inventory. So you can write out your inventory information to the JSON file. That gives your players the opportunity to modify it, to play with it, to play with item stats, stuff like that. It's a really cool idea. It's a really open, really fun way to work with uh, 
mods and games. I look forward to seeing what you guys can make with this information now that you have uh, the ability to write out uh, data and read in data. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I want to say real quick before you go that I recently enabled the fan funding option for the channel. That means you can go to my channel and on the right side or the about page, depending on the application, your platform you're on, you can click to support the channel. And this is a way that you can donate through YouTube directly to the channel. And I get uh, like 95% of this, uh, this money goes straight to me. And that will help support the channel. That will help uh, keep the channel going and help me produce content eventually, hopefully full time. That's what I want to do, but I need this to be uh, something that can sustain itself. So if you can, if you can give a dollar or anything like that, if you want to do that, I'm not telling you have to, but I'm asking you if you want to do that, that will greatly help me in uh, growing the channel to where I want it to be, to where you want it to be, to where we can have these videos uh, much more commonly, much more up to date. And uh, I can't do it without you guys. So thank you for, for all your support. <clears throat> Excuse me. Killed my voice. And I hope we can uh, get this going and get back to where we were before and way beyond. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Austin from Awful Media, and I will see you next time.